So now that we've looked at um, the visible spectrum a little bit here in the context of the whole electromagnetic spectrum and have an idea of the, the wavelengths of light that we're looking at from 380 to 750 nanometers wavelength of light and the kinds of energy contained within those wavelengths, um, we can take a look at the next question which uh, asks here to lead to the next topic then um, how do plants acquire the energy energy from this visible spectrum? So how do plants acquire energy from the visible spectrum? Well basically plants can only acquire this energy uh, if it can absorb that energy has to absorb this energy. So how does it absorb the energy? Photoautotrophs absorb light energy uh, using pigments. So pigments are responsible for absorbing the energy coming in from, with, from light and specifically for higher plants we're looking on um, plants in general at the visible spectrum, light energy coming from the visible spectrum. So uh, in these next diagrams, um, we can illustrate what happens here when light gets absorbed. And once it's absorbed, that energy gets harnessed, what happens next? So uh, let's see. So the question is here, how do pigment molecules, and pigment molecules we're looking at here, we'll list here in just a minute. Um, absorb light energy and we're looking at things like chlorophyll, um, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, uh, carotenoids, uh, other uh, anthocyanin is um, xanthophylls, some of these are what lie within classes of each other, anthocyanin um, and then there are others, other pigments as well. And these various pigments um, take advantage of that visible spectrum from 380 nanometers wavelength to 750 nanometers wavelength in absorbing different parts of the spectrum. So they basically compartmentalize um, various regions of the visible spectrum that they absorb light energy from. In other words, we don't have pigments that absorb light energy from 380 to 750 all by themselves. They basically um, divide the labor. We can kind of use this a division of labor analogy. They divide the labor of absorbing light energy from um, specific parts of the visible spectrum. In other words, they are specialized to absorb light energy from specific parts of that visible spectrum, which we'll see here shortly. Now the one thing that we want to keep in mind here in terms of how do pigment molecules absorb light energy is that um, pigments molecules absorb energy and in so doing they um, raise the energy state of the, an electron in the pigment. So basically it takes one photon um, which raises the energy state of one electron in the pigment molecule. So that's something to keep in mind here is that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the a photon and an electron in terms of transferring energy from the photon to the chlorophyll molecule or the pigment molecule is that one photon raises the energy state of one electron. All right, so in the diagram what we see is here comes some solar uh, radiation or solar energy from the visible spectrum um, and it makes contact with an electron within the chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll is being used as an example of a pigment here. And that's going to raise the energy state, which is the key terminology, um, raise that energy state from a ground state of that electron, uh, the energy state of that electron from the ground state to an excited state. All right, so that energy is now 
harnessing that, uh, that electron rather, is now harnessing that energy, has an elevated state here of, a, of energy. Um, and then the question is, what does the excited electron, which is our abbreviation for electron, E with a minus sign over it, um, then do with this absorb e absorbed energy. Well, there are basically one of four fates that can happen, and they, two of them are illustrated in this diagram, and we'll look at the other two in the next diagram. So what are the different... Uh, once, once an electron reaches this excited state, An electron can do one of four things, which are first, which is illustrated here, can undergo thermal deactivation. And thermal de deactivation is basically where energy dis dissipates as heat. So energy dissipation. Energy dissipates as heat. Okay, and then once the energy is dissipated, the, the electron returns to a ground state. Okay, so the electron, that's another important point here, returns to the ground state. Okay, secondly, uh, second fate that's illustrated here is shown right here called fluorescence. So photon fluorescence. Uh, which is where there's an emission of red light. Now this happens, whoops, let me get the spelling right there. This happens after some degree of thermal deactivation. So the energy level of the electron kind of comes down a bit, um, dissipates some of that excess energy as heat, and as it's lowering a bit more, it starts to emit this red light. And so what we can see up here in the Erlmeyer flask is fluorescence of red light um, to, as a, another way to dissipate excess energy. Okay, and then it returns to the ground state. The, en the, ener the electron returns to a ground state. Now, so far, these two um, fates of the energized electron um, don't do anything for um, towards the process of photosynthesis. They are important in terms of uh, dissipating excess heat that does not get harnessed through the process of um, photosynthesis because otherwise excess um, radiation or energy can um, cause oxidative damage, and which is in the process of producing free radicals which can then um, kind of dismantle that uh, light reaction complex that we'll be talking about. Um, so they are useful in dissipating excess energy. But let's talk about the third and fourth um, fates of the energy from uh, this excited electron, which is shown here in the next figure. You can see here. So the third fate uh, is shown over here, this area of the diagram. Um, which is within a, an area called the uh, light harvesting complex. So this third fate is um, referred to, of, of that energy, is referred to as radiationless transfer or inductive resonance or inductive resonance or resonance transfer um, and so the idea here is that uh, the energy that the energy absorbed by one chlorophyll molecule, the electron of, a, of one chlorophyll molecule, is transferred to a nearby oops, nearby chlorophyll molecule or chlorophyll electron. 
So from the energy absorbed by one chlorophyll's electron is transferred to a nearby, another nearby chlorophyll electron. So that, as we said, happens in the light harvesting complex of photosystems, which we'll be talking much more in depth about photosystems. Photosystems are made up of a light harvesting complex, which you see represented in purple with all these little individual chlorophyll molecules acting like an antenna to capture light energy. And when they capture that energy, they, through radiationless transfer, transfer that ener the energy, not the electron, but the energy from chlorophyll molecule to chlorophyll molecule. Then at the center of the pr uh, photosystem, we have a reaction center. And at the base of the reaction center are two specialized chlorophyll A molecules. Um, which allow us to talk about the fourth, uh, whoops, the fourth fate here, um, and that is referred to as um, photochemical re photochemical redox reaction. Photochemical redox reaction, which refers to oxidation and reduction. Um, reactions. So what we see happening here is that um, that this energized, this, this electron in a, chlor a special chlorophyll A molecule, the electron has uh, reached an elevated state or raised its energy state here from, um, from a ground state to an excited or uh, excited state. And that it's the not just the energy itself, but now it's the energized electron that's going to be transferred to another separate molecule, which was referred to here as the primary electron acceptor. So in essence, the uh, chlorophyll A molecule in the reaction center becomes oxidized because it's losing that electron, and the primary electron acceptor in the reaction center is reduced because it's now accepting or um, gaining that electron. So photochemical redox reactions are where the chlorophyll a molecule, molecule's electron, and we're going to highlight that to make sure we catch that it's the excited electron, is transferred to another molecule. And so, as our example, in the reaction center of photosystems, the special chlorophyll A molecule or electron is transferred to the primary electron acceptor. And that is going to, um, that's our fourth method of transferring energy that originally came from solar energy uh, and now harnessing it chemically within the um, process of light reactions. As we talk more and more about light reactions, we'll talk more and more about uh, reduction versus oxidation. And, and so we just want to make sure we've got clear here that the chlorophyll A molecule is donating, it's the electron donator, the energized electron to uh, an acceptor, to an acceptor, which is the primary electron acceptor. So the donating electron is oxidized, and the accepting electron, uh, the, the donating molecule is oxidized because it's donating an electron, and the accepting molecule, which is accepting the, elect, uh, the electron, is, um, has been reduced. Okay, so we'll be constantly referring to what gets oxidized and what gets reduced in these light reactions. Um, next, we're going to move into a uh, discussion of these pigments and where uh, light is basically absorbed, whether it's, if and if it's not absorbed, then it's either transmitted or reflected, and, um, and connecting this to, um, specifically to pigments.